Omma jnana timarantasya jnana shavakaya chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha Nama om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhai hevacha patita nam pavan hebyo vaishna vibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasate Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Srimad Bhagavatam at the level of Bhakti Vaibhav, and we're studying here Kapila Shiksha, and we're going to go on to chapter number 30 today. So that's Canto 3. No. Oh. Canto 3, Chapter 30, Description of Lord Kapila. Description by Lord Kapila of adverse fruitive activities. Okay, so let's see. Okay, here's the overview of the different sections. Chapter 30 begins with, The time factor deludes the conditioned living entities and causes them to enjoy illusory satisfaction. Actually, chapter 30, we'll hear about the mode of ignorance and passion. And then 31 will be more passion, and 32 will be something more of the mode of goodness. And then 33, we'll hear the conclusion. All right, so the chapter begins with hearing about how living entities are conditioned in the material world and how we're trying to enjoy and we're trying to be satisfied. And then the chapter goes on to describe about householder life, how they become bewildered, enjoying the temporary as if it were permanent. And we do this until old age and death. We, we go on throughout life. So we'll hear about the nature of materialistic life. And then text 20 to 34 describe, after death, the bewildered spirit soul was punished for his sinful attempts at enjoyment. So we're going to hear what happens at the time of death. 
about how the soul is taken from the body and how we have to go to Yamaraj and we're, some are punished and we're given another body. Oh. Let's see. There should be another section here. It's not the end of it. Anyway. Oh, okay. It's included a bit here. You can see after 34, then we'll hear some more questions are put. Okay, talking about the connection with the previous chapter, or previous unit. In the previous chapter, 29 at any rate, in chapter 29, Devahuti at the beginning of the chapter, she had inquired about the effects of time and about the continuous cycle of birth and death. And then Lord Kapiladev began to answer these questions at, at the end of the chapter. Verses 37 up to the end of the chapter, text 45. And then it continues in this chapter. So we're going to hear more about the effects of time. It's a continuation from chapter 29. And Lord Kapila will speak powerfully with the intention of awakening renunciation in our hearts. Are you all ready to renounce in your hearts? Evil! Jai! Very enthusiastic. Someone's very enthusiastic to renounce. Good. Okay. Okay, from the beginning of the, ch let's see, chapter 30, first verse. Let's see. So the first verse, Lord Kapil is speaking, describes about a mass of clouds do not know the powerful influence of the wind. A person engaged in material consciousness does not know the powerful strength of the time factor by which he is being carried. This is definitely a fact, right? We're not aware of the strength of the time factor, but we're all carried under that influence of the time, the wheel of time that Kala Chakra, it's very powerful. Just like just now in Mayapur, all day today there's been strong winds. So the, the, the clouds are carried by the wind. Even though clouds may carry so much water, the wind can blow the clouds around. Okay, then Lord Kapila continues, text 2 and 3 we've shown in the slide. Whatever is produced by the materialist, maybe you can read, someone can read, who's on the, who's, you have a list, right? Who's first? Krishna Maharaj. Yes. yes, Maharaj. Now, Her Grace Bhaktapriya Mataji will start the reading to Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, yeah. Whatever is produced by the materialist with the great pain and labor for happiness, the Supreme Personality, as a time factor, destroys. And for this reason, the condition souls planets. The misguided materialist does not know that his very body is impermanent and that the attractions of home, land and wealth which are in relationship to the body are also temporary. Out of ignorance only, he thinks that everything is permanent. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto number 3, chapter number 30, uh, 2 to 3 verse. All right. All right. So, Lord Kapila is describing the nature of time that we're, because of, the, the, although the time factor destroys everything, but we're so attached, we're so much covered by ignorance, we don't want to admit it. We don't like to admit that it's all temporary. Because if we had to admit it, then we'd think, what's the point? Why should I work? Why should I do all this? Why should I pay all this money? And 
Why? I'm going to have to leave everything. Why should I bother? <laughs> Just like young children in the beginning, they don't want to go to school. They thought, what's the point of all this? Why have to go to school and have to study and learn everything? Oh, useless. So this is ignorance. We're thinking that everything is permanent. This body to be permanent. So we have to understand the nature of this material world. From the Prabhupada's purport, yes, please read. Una Makaji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Out of illusion, only does a materialist accept his home, his land and his money as permanent. Out of, his illu out of this illusion, the family life, national life and economic development, which are very important factors in modern civilization, have grown. A conscious person knows that this economic development of human society is but temporarily illusion. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 30, Shloka No. 3, Purput. Hare Krishna. Why do we have so much difficulty to accept this? When we hear, we're hearing it again, we see it every day. We see people die, we see people take birth. Why, why is it so difficult for us to... Hmm? The illusion of material life. Very important in modern civilization economic development. So a conscious person knows that economic development is temporary, temporary illusion. Anyway, we have to make the best of a bad bargain, right? That's what we say. <laughs> We're here in the material world. What can we do about it? We just have to try to make the best of it. So. The best is to use it in Krishna's service, to become Krishna conscious. That's the best part of life. Okay, we'll go ahead. Oh, oh, from the purport of that verse, speaking about yukta vairagya, right? How many kinds of vairagya do you know? Besides, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Nanda be, Pranam, three yes. types. Three types, Maharaj. What? Yukta Vairagya, Markata Vairagya, Falgu Vairagya, Maharaj. Okay, Falgu Vairagya, Market Vairagya, Yukta Vairagya. Any other Vairagya? Any, anybody else? Smashana Vairagya, Maharaj. Smashana Vairagya? Yeah, good. What is that again, smashna vairagya? As long as you're carrying the body to smashana, you realize that everybody has to do. But then, once you are out of it, you lost that. Oh, yes, right. Like, it, it, that's like uh, going to the crematorium, rem lamenting, is it? Yes, on, on the way to the crematorium, we're philosophical. Yeah, that's all. Back, back your home, and then again you are in the same material. Right. Yes. Smashana vairagya. Okay. And what? Let's hear some examples about markat vairagya. Who said markat vairagya? Prabhu was saying three types of renunciation. Give an, give an example about market vairagya. <coughs> market vairagya is uh, Maharaj uh, jumping from one uh, uh, austerity promise to the other one, Maharaj. Discontinuing, discontinuing the uh, austerities, basically, Maharaj. Pseudo sannyasis, probably. Huh? Pseudo sannyasis. Pseudo sannyasis. Or it's like monkey. Monkey, yeah. Monkey. Yes. It's like a monkey. I think that's the bit that, that's one Prabhupada would usually give, right? Prabhupada would talk about the monkey, right? Mm -hmm. 
In what way is the monkey vairagya? Agitating mind. Mind is agitating. No, we're talking about the monkey. The monkey is markat vairagya. It will, it will fly from home. It is going from one tree to another tree. Not firm minded. In what way is it vairagya? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, the monkey, it moves, it leave, uh, it shows as if it is living a saintly life, as if it is living in the forest and eating fruits, but it is really in, indulged in uh, uh, sex life. Yes, right. It, the monkeys living in the forest, not wearing any covering, naked, and go, living in the forest, eating the, the wild fruits or of course, sometimes they come in the town and they will steal things and so on. But generally, they, they live in the trees and move around in the trees, naked. So they appear to be very detached, but they're very sensuous, very sensual. And we see where there are monkeys, you'll have a big family. They have many wives and they have many children, many chimps, right, offspring. So that people are like that. As, as somebody said, pseudo-sannyasis. They dress up like the sannyasi, but they keep the, like in the Chaitanya Bhagwat it described about uh, how Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were going to Shantipur and they met one, uh, they thought he was a sannyasi. He was in saffron with a beard. And, but he, he, had a wife, he had a woman there and he was telling them, come and have some happiness with me, come and drink some, let's have some happiness together. And Lord Chaitanya wondered what he was talking about. Lord Nityananda told him, he said, I think he wants us to come and drink alcohol with him. So that, that kind of sannyasi, Markat Vairagya, they make a show, externally they appear, but they're very attached. Okay, so that's Markat Vairagya. Then Falgu Vairagya. Let's hear an example. Uh, Falgu Vairagya, like a uh, uh, river is there. It looks like dry bed. But inside there is a few, uh, some uh, dig it, it's, it will be full of the water and meshy legs. So uh, on the top it looks like, uh, so this is the Falgu Vairagya. It's in, uh, from uh, appearance, it's, uh, it looks like that she's a uh, rented person. But inside is full with the, uh, what you call, it, the gratification, gratification and desires. So whenever he gets the chance, it will uh, come up and he will enjoy with that part. Oh, okay. Anybody else like to add anything or say anything? Falgu Vairagya? I mean, actually, uh, without using anything, uh, considering everything with material and living, it is Phalgu uh, Vairagya. Considering everything. No, leaving everything without using it for Krishna. Uh -huh. Even though considering everything is material. Uh, Munuk should be Parityagi. Considering everything is material without uh -huh. using it for Krishna, leaving it as it is, is Palu Varagya. Yes, yes, this is good. Yes. That we don't use everything. We're not using things in the service of Krishna. We renounce it. Right? Give an example. The impersonalist. And also, for example, Prabhupada very clearly says this mic, thinking mic is useless and they're not using it. Instead of using it properly for Krishna services. Well, you're talking about Yukta Vairagya there. Your example is Yukta Vairagya, to use the mic in the service of Krishna. So, Falgu Vairagya is to what? To say this. The impersonalist. Well, you can't just say impersonalist. It doesn't mean anything to me. 
I don't see any, I don't know what you, I, am, I want to have an example about Vairagya. And you can't just say impersonalist. The impersonalists have given up their uh, desire to have any type of uh, sense gratification. They are unable to engage their senses. They have given up eating uh, tasty food. They have just uh, renounced everything. Basically, Maharaj, there's a uh, desire to... Uh, it uh, shows that I'm giving up everything, but inside there's a desire to become a god or there's a desire to become a controller of the... This is like that. Uh -huh. Okay. Can I share another example, Maharaj? Hare yes, Krishna. yes, please. Yeah. So if if someone has some money, and and it he he or she approaches that you know money is Maya, I will not touch it. Uh, that is that is uh, Falgu Vaira. Yes. Right. Yes. That's a good example. Easy to understand. Okay. All right. So Mohagriha. Shetra Vasini, out of illusion only does the materialist accept his home, his land, and his money as permanent. Mohadgriha Shetra Vasini. When, however, one is enlightened in Krishna consciousness, he can use these for the service of the Lord. That is a very suitable proposition. Everything has a relationship with Krishna. When all economic development and material advancement are utilized to advance the cause of Krishna consciousness, a new phase of progressive life arises. So, on this principle, are we justified to say that, you know, uh, I need the latest car, and I need the latest iPhone, and the latest computer for my service to Krishna. Is that Yukta Vairagya? No, Madam. Why not? Okay, if uh, <clears throat> I want to do proper devotional service, I need uh, like laptop. Like for example, you are giving uh, a class to the 30 devotees here. So you need a better laptop to uh, acquaint with the, to, to, to preach. So there is uh, nothing wrong in having a uh, best uh, laptop or iPhone in the service of the Lord. Okay. But if I demand, I need the latest one. Of course, latest is always good. If we get fine, otherwise also we are happy. Uh, Maharaj, there is a, like, we can say the latest one, even as a, the highest end of the car, we can say. For us, it's a vehicle of utility. For us, an instrument of utility. And our purpose is to serve the Lord. And when Lord is a uh, owner of the, or the controller of the uh, whole universe, why not to be use a, uh, uh, use the for him latest one? What is the problem in there? We can use it, but thing is that we should not have that. Oh, I am having this one. It should be used for the service of the Lord. Okay. Yeah, we have to be cautious about these things. Yeah. Like for traveling, we can the car is a vehicle of duty for us. Uh, doesn't matter for us. We, at a time, we have a uh, high-ended car or a small car. For us, for us, it's only the vehicle of utility. That should be the mandalic. It doesn't matter as to which time we are traveling and which one. Right. And also, Maharaj, a live example is Srila Prabhupada because he he traveled in Royals Royal also and also he Bullock cart also. But for him, it was uh, immaterial. He has used everything in the service of Lord. Yes. Yes, the consciousness is important. We shouldn't think everything is just for our enjoyment. But according to time and circumstances, whatever is provided for the service of Krishna, make use of it in the service of Krishna. Right? When Prabhupada was staying in the five-star hotel and the reporters asked him, 
is this all, is, is, what, you know, you came in the Rolls Royce in the five star hotel. What did Prabhupada say? I want to, all, all of you going very fast, so I want to go faster than you so that I can catch you and make you Krishna conscious. Yes, anybody remember what he said? Hare Krishna Maharaj, can I share? Yes. Yeah, I, what I remember is he said, Oh, Rolls Royce, this is nothing. I am Krishna's servant. And, and uh, compared to that, Rolls Royce is nothing. Yeah. Yes, that was one reply, one thing. They said that, you know, they've offered me this car. They said, actually, it said should be a, you know... Gold. Yeah, it should be a golden car, it should be... Golden car, yes. Yeah, it should be a spaceship, you know, you should be an astro. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, whatever they offered, I've accepted. A another time, Prabhupada said that if I was under a tree, you would not come to see me. If I sat on it, if I rode a bicycle and sat under a tree, you would not come to see me. Another time in London, they were talking about the, you know, it was uh, Osho, you know, Rajneesh time. And there was this Rajneesh from Pune and he had many cars, Rolls Royces and things. And they saw Prabhupada being very, you know, frugal and simple and living with us in, in London, in our little place in London. And so they, they wanted Prabhupada to speak against the, the sadhus who have the big cars. But Prabhupada said, well, sadhu may have the big car, doesn't mean he's bogus. They said, the one on the bicycle may be bogus. They said, you have to hear what they say. It's not the vehicle which makes the difference. But you have to listen to what they're teaching and what they're saying, what they're doing. You can't judge just by the bicycle or the car. Right? So we... we we, we do encourage this yukta vairagya, utilizing everything in the service of Krishna. Is everyone there? Are you hearing me okay? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, yes Maharaj. Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, everyone okay with this? You understand this point? We, we can't condemn somebody just because they have a, you know, the latest car and, the, and they have the best the latest iPhone or anything. You know, Pundarik Vijaniti, Pundarik Vijaniti is a good example of that. Pundarik Vijaniti, he fooled people. And people looked at Pundarik Vijaniti and even Gadarha Pandit thought he was a materialist because he was so opulent. And he was, you know, he, he was surrounded by servants and he was enjoying comforts. But he just did it to fool people. Actually, he was a great devotee. He just didn't want people to think of him like that as a great devotee. Okay, we'll go ahead. So, the real problem of life, there we see. The real, the real problem is not simply what vehicle we're on and what luxury items we have. The real problems of life are these, these things. We're battling against birth, death, old age and disease. And we have to think how to solve this problem. This is a real issue. So Srimad Bhagavatam then speaks about these uh, two phases of the material energy. Avaranatmika and Prakshep Atmika. Who can explain? Avaran Atmika. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, uh, Shla Prabhupada says that Avaran Atmika is the, the covering potency of, of Maya. It covers living entity um, from, from getting the, the real knowledge. Okay. So Avaran Atmika is the covering and the Prakshik Atmika Prakshapatmika is the, the, the throwing potency. The throwing, eh? Yeah, in the purport here Prabhupada says the pulling down. 
Right? So similar, you say throwing. Throwing from where? Um, it, um, uh, this mental energy, it, it throws from, um, from the, uh, the enjoying tendency. Because of that, this, uh, the illusory energy throws down the living entity into the material pool. Yes, right. Throwing us out from the spiritual world into the material pool. Right? This is, so the prakshik apnika kicks us out into the material energy and we fall down. And we're in the material world and then the avaran atmika arranges the covering. So what gets covered? What's covered? Our spiritual identity, Maharaj. Our spiritual identity? That, that we, are, we are supposed to serve Krishna as his eternal servant with, with love and affection. Can the soul actually be covered? Um, uh, actually, the, 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 uh, the, the spiritual nature cannot be covered, Maharaj, but since we are very minute, and we have the tendency to, to enjoy on our own without Krishna, because of that we get covered by us. Okay, yeah. Because of our tatasta nature, our, our marginal potency, we're the marginal potency, so we can fall, we become covered. Prabhupada gives the example, just like the, the clouds cover the sun, the sun is never actually covered. But where we are, from where we are, it appears the sun is covered because the clouds are blocking the rays of the sun. So, but in Bahrain, the sun may be there very bright, but in some in Europe or Russia or somewhere, maybe snow, maybe all clouds. So different ways, different positions. So covering is you know, the Lord can never be covered. But as Prabhu said, we, the, the Lord, He's not minute, He's infinite. We are the minute, we are very small, but the Lord is infinite. So His potency can never be covered, but we can be covered. All right, someone like to read the, the, the quotation there, text number four. Nainiti Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 334. The living entity in whatever species of life, he appears, finds a particular type of satisfaction in that species, and he is never averse to being situated in such a condition. Srimad Bhagavatam 335. Can you, give an, can you give an example of that? That, that, that even though we're in a terrible condition, we, we, we just accept it? Uh, it's too eating hog. Yes, right. Do you see any examples of that in the material life among humans? The karmi is Maharaj. Maharaj, Duncan lying in that, uh, in some pit, filled with the filth. What's it's that? A drunken man. Yes. Lying on under one, one uh, you know, for dart or any filth, and still he will be enjoying. Hmm. His thinking is enjoying, eh? Yes. Okay. Yeah, material life. Sometimes, you know, even the demigods, you know, they, they when they see uh, the living entities on this planet, the different conditions which we're living and working in, they feel sympathy, they, they feel, oh, so unfortunate, so miserable conditions they're living in. We live in, you know, we're, we're very conditioned. We live in these different environments and we, and we never think about it. We never think there's anything wrong in it. I was talking to the devotees the, uh, just uh, two days ago, devotees in Geneva, in Switzerland, and they told me, oh, they had a heavy snowstorm, and the snow was all frozen, it had become ice, so it was going to be there for a long time, it would take days to, before it would melt. So it was so cold, you know, so much snow and so cold. 
and people are living in these conditions, you know, and it's, it's so difficult, you know. And it's, and then when Prabhupada came to England, when Prabhupada came to England and, and he was on an interview and they asked him, what's it like in hell? And Prabhupada told them that this London, this is hell. He said, never see the sun. Every day, cloudy, rainy, wet. Oh. <laughs> the people in London, you know, they're shocked, you know. But to Prabhupada, it was just like hell. No sun. Because Prabhupada is used to taking, a, going outside and having his massage in the sun. And sitting in the sun. When he lived in Vrindavan, he would collect the water in, the, in his bucket and then put the bucket in the rays of the sun and let the sun heat the water and this way he'd be able to have a little warm water to take back. So, different lifestyles, different conditions. Somehow we become happy in whatever condition we're in. The bird is living in his nest and the king is living in his palace. So everyone is suffering and enjoying, but somehow we're, we're happy, we feel, oh, it's okay, oh, not so bad, yeah, how are you today, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, go ahead Prabhu, read number five, text five. Are you uh, the condition living an entity is satisfied in his own particular species of life, while deluded by the covering influence of the illusory energy, he feels little inclined to cast off his body, even when in hell, for he takes delight in hellish enjoyment. Okay, what is that covering, what was that deluded by the covering influence of the illusory energy? What was the term for that covering influence? Avaranatmika. Yes, right. Good. And he feels inclined to cast off his body even when in hell. For he takes delight in hellish enjoyment. What is this hellish enjoyment? Can you give some example about hellish enjoyment? Can I share Maharaj, Hare Krishna? Yes. Bhagavad Pranam. So, breaking all the four regulative principles is, is like hellish enjoyment. People, people think that they are, they are really enjoying. Yes, they think, they think they're enjoying. They smoke cigarettes, it's like smoking fire you know, fumes, they even have that one cigarette, they used to have this one cigarette, cool or something, it's a menthol cigarette or something, and they're smoking, burning the tobacco and they're thinking cool. <laughs> it's such an illusion, such a, a trick. So hellish enjoyment, they drink things like alcohol, liquor, and it burns all the intestines of the body and people die very prematurely, due to consuming so much alcohol, and they're thinking enjoyment. So hellish. So many ways people are suffering, and what they're thinking is enjoyment. Smoking cigarettes, you get lung cancer, all of these things, what we're thinking is in the name of enjoyment. Okay, so there's a pig. There's the monkeys and the birds. Birds are also enjoying, right? Okay, go ahead. Someone can read. Gopjan Prabhuji. Krishna's family. <clears throat> Krishna's family, Kharish to Maharaj, please accept and uh, Krishna's family and Maya's family. The family we maintain is created by Maya. 
it is the perverted reflection of the family of krishna loka in krishna loka there are also family friend, family friends society father and mother everything else is there but they are all eternal here as we change our bodies our family relationships also change sometimes we are in a family of human beings sometimes in a family of demigods sometimes a family of cats or sometimes a family of dogs do they have brahmacharis there in the spiritual world do they have sannyasis there in the spiritual world no maharaj no maharaj no oh. so everything is not there huh? why not why is there no sannyasis there maharaj if, if please correct me uh, this varna ashrama dharma is to purify our consciousness because we are contaminated in goloka or by kunta that uh, there is nothing to be purified there we are already purified there so there is no varna ashrama or brahmachari uh, etc etc is not there and please correct me maharaj oh, yeah good yeah very nice yeah no need for varna ashram there right go ahead manjari raga mata ji फ्रेंडशिप here in the material world are only shadows and thus they become attached simad bhagavatam 3.37 so the material family is only shadow are you are we able to understand this are we able to realize this we may talk about it you know we can repeat it but to actually ap apply it it's very difficult isn't it yes maharaj we have so much affection naturally you have to have affection for a family part of a society friends so the attachment is there but the attachment is the perversion of the the spiritual world a real family so the material family always full of anxiety so many problems so many things so difficult so difficult to satisfy the family also so trying to give up the affection for the shadows of course there's there is so much endeavor is required to maintain the family and it's a there's some satisfaction there in maintaining a family and having a family maintaining a family and some some feeling of security is there but that also is not eternal because the family cannot protect us ultimately all right a little exercise for you maras there was one hand raised oh really yes janaki ma prabhu dandavat pranams maharaj so uh, you know we we read here maharaj that our our relations uh, in this world they are all perverted reflections and and they are all temporary so what's what's the right application uh, of this understanding maharaj well the right application is to understand 
but that the reflection also has a true object. And the object is the spiritual form. So all of these reflections, the shadows, they're related to the pure objects. They're all persons. They're spiritual persons. They're also parts and parcels of Lord Krishna. They're, you could say they're friends of Krishna. And they belong in the spiritual world. And so we should understand our duty in family life is to bring them to Krishna consciousness and to awaken them, to help them to maintain their Krishna consciousness. Because they're, the fact that they are shadows indicates that, you know, they're, they're, there must be an object for there to be a shadow. So the actual object is from the spirit, is in the spiritual world. So these shadows are just, they're the reflection of the, the true person who belongs in the spiritual world. And we have to make arrangements to help them all get back to the spiritual world. And so in that way, family, society and friendship is very good. If we're helping everyone to become Krishna conscious, then there's no problem. That is the proper application of this. Understand? Agree? Yes, Maharaj. But uh, while, while doing the duty, while, while serving them nicely, how to not get attached uh, with, with family and friends? Well, we have to become attached to Krishna. We have to be attached to Krishna and Krishna's service. So whatever you do for the family and friends and so on, it should be in relation to Krishna. You're going to do something for them, you want to help them to become Krishna conscious. And so it's naturally there must be some attachment there for the family. It's not wrong, but the, the attachment should be in relation to Krishna and Krishna consciousness. And the duty is to help everyone to become Krishna conscious. Just like you, you, the family want a holiday. And so you say, all right, we'll go to India, we'll go to Vrindavan, we'll go to Mayapur, we'll have a holiday. <laughs> and they say, oh no, I want to go to America, I want to go to Australia. Like, they say, oh, okay, okay, you go to America and we go to the temple in America and go and see the temple. Or you tell them, no, no, I just want to go to India, no need to go to America, just come to India, we'll go to the holy places, much better. See the holy places and go, with the, go in the association of devotees. Thank you, Maharaj. Dhanavad Pranams. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Maharaj, can we uh, say that the attachment to Krishna is the only uh, uh, driving force to, to, to run or uh, to maintain the relationships between uh, with our family members? Yes. Yes, it's essential. Other, otherwise, the family life has no meaning. Okay, if there's no Krishna, that's mentioned. I, we were just reading the other night, last night, that we were reading the uh, the beginning of the third canto about uh, Kardama. It's coming up to Kardama and Devahuti. It was talked between Maitreya and Vidura. It was text chapter number twenty, and they were talking about uh, why did Vidura leave home. Why did Vidura get out from the palace of Hastinapur? It, it wasn't just that Dhritarashtra's son Duryodhana threw him out, but Vidura was happy to get out of the home because there was no Krishna consciousness there. They were all, they were gross materialists. They were, they were interested only in their own sense gratification. So it was not conducive for his Krishna conscious life. Therefore, Vidura left home. If the home life, if the family life is not conducive to Krishna consciousness, there's no point to stay in there, in that life. You have to leave. You yes, agree? Maharaj. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very convincing, Maharaj. Thanks a lot. 
And Prabhupada did that himself also. Prabhupada eventually, he also had to leave home. Of course, not abruptly, but, you know, after carefully, after trying, after so many attempts, you know, and failing, then finally he understood it was time, he had to go. So we have to understand. What do you say, ladies? Ladies are quiet. You know, ladies are there? Yes, Maharaj. You, yes, Maharaj. you agree, right? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. If your, if your husband's a drunkard and a meat eater, what are you going to do? Leave them, bro. You're, go, you're going to leave them, eh? Yeah. We'll put you in the widow's home in Vrindavan. Right? Many women like that. They leave the home, they go to Vrindavan, become widows, and they want to leave their body in Vrindavan. Okay, we'll go ahead. Here's this exercise. Reflect on an experience in your life when the principles described in Srimad Bhagavatam regarding the temporary nature of material family relationships became apparent to you. Share with a partner. How many people are here? 29 Maharaj. Oh my goodness, so many, yeah? All right. Can we have partners? Can we do it? We'll have a lot of this, pairs. This marriage. Okay. So how long we have to give them? How long it will take to reflect on this? Five minutes minimum marriage. Yes, five minutes minimum, I agree. Okay, so we'll try five minutes, see. Temporary. Once again, once again, mother, let me assign it. Okay, Manaj, can I open the rooms? Yes. Recording stopped. Please join the rooms. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Thunderbolt Maya obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Please accept uh -huh. my... Yes? So? <laughs> Do you have some realizations on this? Maharaj, after we study this uh, in this particular section, uh, we uh, I just I came to know that there is a uh, relationship even in the spiritual world also, like father, mother. Uh, uh, but I was under the impression that it's only the relationship is only here. But now from this section, I, I realized that there is a relationship. With that relationship is eternal. That is not temporary. It will not change. Yes. So. So we, we what our relationship, what we have at present, we need to work together in the service of the Lord to realize our eternal relationship with our partners. With your partner here in the material world. Yes, Maharaj. So whoever is there with us, either like the father or son or wife, whoever it is, then we need to work together in the service of the world. Yes, if your partner is a devotee, will your partner share the same mood? Yes, Maharaj, by Krishna's mercy and uh, all Vaishnava's mercy, Maharaj. 
Okay. What do you say, Sankarshan Chaitanya Prabhu? Yeah, Maharaj, uh, I mean, this chapter is really eye opening. Uh, um, I mean, uh, we, have, we have listened this so many times and we have understood also, we have accepted also this philosophy, but problem is uh, due to our attachment or unfulfilled material desire, now we need to rectify those desires. And as you said, this is the best bargain of the best uh, of that bargain. So, how to see Krishna conscious uh, mood uh, while serving family members? How to see universal service while engaged in uh, our occupational duty? Pro pro I mean, if uh, I mean, since I'm working for a company, so, so I, am I still, still seeing uh, any universal aspect in uh, uh, in uh, uh, while engaging in uh, uh, worldly affairs, I mean, uh, the job or dealing with uh, non uh, Krishna conscious uh, devotees. So, so, so the practical application uh, is, is, has become, uh, I mean, time uh, uh, for, uh, aspect to focus on. For example, like Karmi, while dealing with Karmi people, I, I would like to maintain my identity as Krishna's servant. I mean, many of our customers, I mean, in my uh, job, even employees of my, I mean, the, the, the co-workers are also uh, knows me as Krishna's servant. Uh, I mean, at, at least on the external aspect, they see my identity. Uh, while serving family members, also see that uh, how all the family members are engaged in different different activities my wife is she has just done bhakti sasri so encouraging her for her studies children are doing uh, uh, children i mean engage in children classes and uh, uh, various classes to learn kirtana and motive is to see how how this material Positions or material involvement is is converted to Krishna conscious uh, 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 Krishna conscious life uh, or the uh, where Krishna is the prime mover Krishna is the only objective uh, Krishna is the only driving force for all the affairs for all the dealings for all the transactions or for all the relations. Are, so are you are you able to wear devotee dress or devotee attire when you go to work? Uh, Maharaj, since we are in Gulf, so we don't, uh, I mean, I don't wear, but uh, sometimes put intentionally keep my tilaka so that, uh, I mean, where the situation is under my control, where I can uh, uh, make people to ask me what is this, or uh, uh, Hindu people to feel that, see how this person is putting tilaka without any fear. I mean, it is not open, uh, openly I'm doing, but wherever situation is controlled, I mean, in my where I'm working, we have three initiated devotees, so we don't mind to keep Tilaka. So, as much as possible, want to maintain my identity. And while discussing also with them, uh, we can always, uh, I mean, since uh, this Muslim peoples are also God conscious, so they say Inshallah, we always say Insha Krishna. So while dealing, dealing with any Hindu family, I mean Hindu person, we always tell, oh, Isha Krishna. So you will tell that, oh, you are Krishna's uh, devotee. So that way, you know, uh, I make them feel that I also trying to, I'm, uh, I'm Krishna's servant. And what is uh, special in that? So like that. But uh, we know that every steps is uh, very cautiously we, we have to put our foot down. <laughs> Otherwise, any time it is so slippery and so hazardous, so dangerous that we will be dragged out uh, by Maya. So, but at least having uh, this knowledge, having this wisdom with us, we can uh, see our movement, uh, uh, I mean, happening here in material uh, world marriage. And blessings are always, uh, we are expecting and aspiring for Guru Gauranga's mercy always. Okay. Okay. Very good, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
Otherwise, it's closing. It will take another 25 seconds. Okay. Once everybody joins, I'll switch, uh, switch on the recording. Recording in progress. All right. Would someone like to share with us something about their discussion? Maybe we could hear from Matijis. Hare Krishna Ma Maharaj, may I? Yes, please, Matiji. Uh, we were in room number nine with uh, Susmita Sakhi Devidasi Mataji, and <laughs> we had a very similar story about ourselves like uh, Mataji was relieving the time when she lost her mother then I was also telling her about the same story how I lost my mother then uh, and she lost her mother to cancer same thing with my mom and then like uh, ours was like we, we started by saying about losing three of my relatives in a year and the first time it was my grandmother was feeling very bad and after some time uh, my mother and then again uh, five months later my uncle all in a year then I realized it's so temporary and it just didn't mean much to me that like it's just like one physical body leaving another physical body just like that but at the same time even though uh, we read the Bhagavad Gita and then uh, the uh, part of Srimad Bhagavatam it was very difficult for us to just um, accept certain things and even Mataji was correlating sometimes that uh, she goes into depression sometimes uh, just the, the thinking of her mother just few months back and uh, although although we should be convinced about certain things that are written in Srimad Bhagavatam when it comes to uh, the practical aspects of it it becomes very difficult for us to accept these because of the attachment that we have to the physical body. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you, Masaji. Very nice. Yes, interesting to hear. Very nice. That it's amazing that naturally we will feel depressed if we think deeply about the nature of this world. That, you know, we're all here, we're all dying, we're, and everything is temporary. It's very depressing. So it's, sometimes it's, it's really difficult not to be depressed in this world. And we have to have a positive alternative, and that is Krishna Consciousness, which can give us the relief from the material miseries of life. All right, we'll just take one more group, maybe? Someone yes, else? Mark. Yes, Maharaj. I'm uh, Udhan Chamdas. Yes. From the uh, group 10, we have a Radharani Mataji, Radharani Vidhani Mataji. Uh, the, thing is that, uh, Maharaj, we think what is the basis because of that we suffer in the material world. We suffer in the material world because what we have an attachment and with that one mode of material nature, it made us to go through that like, you scratch my back, I will scratch your back. This is the base of the relationship, mode of the material world is there. We, our money and sense gratification are the best. When we are giving the money to someone who are fulfilling their desire, they are happy. When we are not able to give a money and then they come back and they feel that we are not doing well. Because of this, and we see a lot of brokerage of the marriages now, the divorce has been gone up. The reason is the false ego and not all, uh, giving the sense gratification. There is so much different, uh, indulgence in the sense gratification, they are not realizing the real purpose of the Grasta Ashram. Then we have a struggle of the life for uh, our daily routine requirement. Also, Krishna says, I give a food to ant to elephant, but still we are like same food for thing we are struggling. So much time we are wasting. So say, same like animals while they are doing in the four things, sleeping, mating, eating and defending. We are doing here, but for that what, how much time we are spending for that, how much energy we are spending on that. All this gives our illusion energy effect at that one. And because of that we have a suffering. And now the Maharaj one is attachment. So much attachment we have with that one. 
So somebody will lose something and somebody uh, away from us. We don't realize that one. Like I have one story from my friend. He had a relationship with a with a girl for five years. They get married, and five weeks, they, just five weeks, and they broke up. So that's the one of the the, the guy suffering because of that is trying to oh why did so much so much but these things comes very easily to the person head and mind. So because when you are everything is uh, we think think uh, when you do many things for some people like Ratnakar who become a Valmiki Rishi he was doing so many things for the family but when he Nara says go to your family and ask for whom you are doing Papa Singh's activity. They will take a participation. They said, "No, we are not going to take a part. Everything is for you, because your duty to follow, uh, to uh, serve us." So this is the thing. So we have to be known. And similarly, we feel happy in the uh, material. Material world happiness is like uh, uh, somebody getting just momentarily free from the pain. Like somebody is drowning, head inside the water, and is not able to breathe. After a few minutes, when he is able to breathe, that moment which he feels the sigh of relief, that is the Happiness we are getting in a material world, and we are thinking we are happy. So when we see all these things, and every our daily life, the husband's relation, children's relationship, we go up and down with these things. That and when we start realizing that these relations are temporary, they are based on these things, then you can detach themselves from their yourself and be as a looking from little away, and that that gives a little little relief to us from inside. And our suffering goes down. What I noticed that one. Otherwise, I was before a small, small thing in the family. I was usually start having very angry or sometimes emotionally attachment. Though this child, I'm doing so much. I was if I was there. But now I'm keeping trying to away from that one and still looking from little away. Oh, this is the role. This is a cycle of that material world. And then after that, I, I have reduced my pain and that one, and I am more stable in that. period of time then i go through this cycle mm. hari krishna ah. so you go through the cycle of attachment and depression and anxiety and all the yeah. material emotions and you get out of it by taking shelter yes krishna consciousness and understanding this one right. that this is not the temporary okay thank you very much prabhu very interesting Very real. Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's see. Here we are. Okay, we're up to text number ten here, in the in this chapter. Oh, text number ten. Would someone like to read text number ten? ஒன்னும்ஸ்ட்ரேஷன்ஸ்ட்ரேஷன்ஸ்ட்ரேஷன்ஸ்ட்ரேஷன்ஸ்ட்ரேஷன்ஸ்ட்ரேஷன்
He had to he had to get so much money to maintain the family and to commit so many sinful activities, sometimes even violence, all for the service of his family. And he got money by so many illegal means, he had to go to hell. And he's earning the money for the family members, trying to maintain them, all their demands. So he's happy, oh, he's happy to get Find away. coming to an end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the old age, the body, you know, the misery, the, as we get older, the body becomes more and more difficult. So many problems with the body. And you know, our eyesight goes and our hair starts to fall out and go grey and everything. And then we cannot yes. sit down properly. We can't, people can't sit. They have to be in chairs. They can't sit on the floor cross-legged anymore. <laughs> and there's so many problems. You can hardly walk. And we have walking sticks and things for people, you know. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, the person who's dying, he's happy. Oh, I'm glad to get away from it, you know. He's, no, in one way, he's happy. Yes, in that way, he's happy, yes. Oh, you could go on. And, can you read text 11 also? Oh, oh okay, my Yes. When he suffers reverses in his occupation, he tries again and again to improve himself. But when he is baffled in all attempts and is ruined, he accepts money from others because of excessive greed. Mm -hmm. So, this is a big problem. Just like just at this time, you know, with the pandemic, some people have been, many people have been put into serious economic conditions. Some people lost, many people lost their jobs, a lot of unemployment, difficult. So reverses in the occupation, and you, you take up some profession with the intention thinking, I can improve myself, I'll make money, but you, but you fail. And, and, and then you have to take money from others. Sometimes you even people try to do business on their own and they borrow money from others take money from others, never want to pay it back, never can pay it back, always in debt. Okay, someone else like to read text number 12? Oh, oh not 12, 10, 11, yeah. Does the unfortunate man unsuccessful in maintaining his family members is bereft of all beauty? He always thinks of his failure living very deeply. Mm. Yeah, this is material life, you know. We, so many failures, trying to maintain the family, <laughs> so much anxiety. Okay, can you read the next text, Prabhu? Yes. The foolish family man does not become a worst family life, although he is maintained by those whom he once maintained. Deformed by the influence of old age, he prepares himself to meet ultimate death. Hare Krishna. Tanavats. What text was that, Prabhu? 14. No, we, we didn't do 13 yet. Sorry, I'm sorry. Seeing him unable to support them, his wife and others do not treat him with the same respect as before, even as my silly farmers do not accord, accord the same treatment to their old and worn out oxen. <laughs> so the farmers, the farmers have the old animals, the old oxen, naturally not going to give it such nice grass to eat or take such nice care of it in their old age. And so similarly, elderly people, when the family members are, when they see that their father is no longer able to support them, they don't have the same respect. And Prabhupada said that about his own life. Because Srila Prabhupada had a business initially, but then somehow his business wasn't doing well, and it was difficult the family members then no longer had the same respect for him anymore. And so then Prabhupada understood 
it's a good time to go. All right. Takes 14 and 15. Someone? Namaste, Prabhu. Nitinath Singh, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. The Hare. foolish family man does not become averse to family life, although he is maintained by those who, by those whom he once maintained. Deformed by the influence of old age, he prepares himself to meet ultimate death. Okay. Yeah. Foolish family man does not become a very family life. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Next verse. Next 15. Thus he remains at home just like a pet dog and eats whatever is so neg negligently given to him. Afflicted with many illness such as dyspepsia and loss of appetite, he eats only very small morsels of food and he becomes an invalid who cannot work anymore. So we often see that kind of situation. You know, sometimes in the course of doing book distribution, go door to door around different houses, and then you see sometimes in the home somewhere there's some elderly gentleman in a wheelchair being looked after by a maid. One of my friends, one devotee, he was in hospital and he told me he saw that an elderly man who was in the hospital also nearby. And the elderly man, the family had arranged a maid to take care of him. So the maid was there. She spent the whole day watching television as the man lay on the bed dying. The maid was there. She just spent the whole day just watching the television. And the poor man, you know, he, he didn't, sometimes, well, sometimes they'll feed Sometimes they'll take care, you know, maybe they were just feeding him by nose drip, things like this. <laughs> so that's the material world, like that. Not very pleasant, nothing to look forward to in old age, is it? Yes? So next two verses. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Text 16. In that diseased condition, one's eyes bulged due to the pressure of air from within, and his glands become congested with mucus. He has difficulty breathing, and upon exhaling and inhaling, he produces a sound like gara gara or rattling within the throat. <laughs> yeah, sound like dirt. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yes, Maharaj. Text 17. In this way, he comes under the clutches of death and lies down, surrounded by lamenting friends and relatives. And although he wants to speak with them, he no longer can, can because he is under the control of time. Go ahead. Just finish 18. Yes, ma'am. Thus, the man who engaged with uncontrolled senses in maintaining a family dies in great grief, seeing his relatives crying. He dies most pathetically, in great pain and without consciousness. Oh, so this is the death of the materialist, you see, dies most pathetically. So we should understand, of course, we, what is death, first of all? Death is simply the change of the body. You give up one body, take another body. We see devotees, one, one of a, a very nice devotee uh, from Myanmar. There was one devotee, he was a disciple of Gorgovinda Maharaj. And he left the body recently. He had throat cancer and he was in hospital for some time. and. They couldn't do anything, so finally his family arranged, they brought him back to Vrindavan and he was able to leave the body in Vrindavan. So he was lucky, he could get back to Vrindavan to leave the body. 
that's the best place. Ideally, we want to hear the holy name at the time of leaving the body. So devotees like to actually go and do kirtan. When someone's leaving the body, the devotees will go there and they'll do kirtan for the departing soul. Make it auspicious. You can see, and if you see the film of Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was leaving the body, how devotees were all there chanting. Oh, okay. Sorry? Devotees go to places where the devotees are most at the words of leaving the body, especially our Venkateshwar going to Yes. Yeah, we have to do that. It's our duty. Okay, go ahead. Next one. Krishna's family, Maya's family. Who's who's reading? Radha Haridi Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. It is judicious, therefore, to give up family attachment before one attains old age and take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One should employ himself in the Lord's service so that the Supreme Lord can take charge of him and he will not be neglected by his kinsmen. Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, 30th chapter, 13th verse. Right. The, what the, what's the Vedic injunction when you should leave home? At the age of 50 years, one should leave the home. Yeah, where should you go? Uh, uh, he should go to uh, Vrindavan uh, or uh, uh, holy place and take association of the devotees and uh, practice uh, complete Krishna consciousness. Yes, right. We should, uh, the Vedic system was to go to forest and do tapasya. <laughs> But in this age, we can't go to the forest, so we go to the temple, go to the Krishna conscious temple. And in the Krishna conscious temple, we get the association and we do our tapasya in the temple. It's tapasya. Of course, it's not going to be like in your home. It's a you're going to Krishna's home. You're living in the temple, in the temple, and you come to do some service, take up some simple service, help to clean the temple or do some whatever service they want you to do, maybe sit and do kirtan or something. But we come to do service for Krishna in the temple, that's the idea. To take up some service and prepare for the next life, for going back to be with Krishna or whatever situation Krishna is going to put us in. All right, so then the chapter goes on. We're going to hear about meeting the Yamadutas, text 19 to 27. We need somebody to read the, all of these verses. Who's a good reader? Can I, Maharaj? Yes, please do, Madhuji. Thank you, Maharaj. Text 19, translation. At death, he sees the messengers of the Lord of death come before him. Their eyes full of wrath and in great fear he passes stool and urine. Text 20, translation. As a criminal is arrested for punishment by the constables of the state, a person engaged in criminal sense gratification is similarly arrested by the Yamadutas who bind him by the neck with strong rope and cover his subtle body so that he may undergo severe punishment. Text 21. While carried by the constables of Yamaraja, he is open and trumpets in their hands. While passing on the road, he is bitten by dogs and he can remember the sinful activities of his life. He is thus terribly distressed. 22. Under the searching sun, the criminal has to pass through roads of hot sand with forest fires on both sides. He is whipped down the back by the constables because of his inability to walk and is afflicted by hunger and thirst. But unfortunately, there is no drinking water, no shelter and no place for rest on the road. 23. While passing on that road to the abode of Yamaraja, he falls down in fatigue and sometimes he becomes unconscious, but is forced to rise again. 
In this way, he is very quickly brought to the presence of Yamaraja. 24. Thus, he has to pass 99,000 yojanas within two or three moments, and then he is at once engaged in the torturous punishment which is destined to suffer. 25. He is placed in the midst of burning pieces of wood and his lips are set on fire. In some cases, he is made to eat his own flesh or have it eaten by others. Hare Krishna. 26. 26. His entrails are pulled out by the hounds and vultures of hell, even though he is still alive to see it and is subjected to torment by serpents, scorpions, gnats, and other creatures that bite him. 27. Next, his lips are locked off and torn asunder by elephants. He is hurled down from hilltop and is also held captive, either in water or in a cave. Oh, Krishna, so much suffering, yeah? <laughs> so? Some people have experience of these things, you know, people may question, is this, uh, is this actually true, is it really like that? Well, some people have experiences, a real life experience, they call, sometimes near death experiences. We have the example of Ajamila, of course. Ajamila saw the Yamaduts and Vishnu Dudas, and many people leaving the body, often in under medical care, the doctors call it terminal restlessness syndrome. Terminal restlessness syndrome. What's happening? They're actually seeing the Yamadudas coming before them, and so they are fearful. So that is the nature of the material world. There's, well, time of death, there's that, the, that nothing to look forward to for the sinful people because they've done so much sins they have to suffer so we hear about their their situation they're so so attached there's so much suffering there for them okay we'll go ahead text number 28 we need someone else to read 28 to 34. Radhe Shri Madhaji. Radhe Shri Madhaji. Yes Prabhuji. <clears throat> Verse number 28. Men and women whose lives were built upon indulgence in illicit sex life are put into many kinds of miserable conditions in the hills known as Tamishra, Andh Tamishra, and Rauravak. Mm -hmm. Text 29. Lord Kapila continued. My dear mother, it is sometimes said that we experience hell or heaven on this planet, for hellish punishments are sometimes visible on this planet also. Text 30. After leaving this body, the man who maintained himself and his family members by sinful activities suffers a hellish life, suffers a hellish life and his relatives suffers also. Text 31. He goes alone to the darkest region of hell after quitting the prison body <clears throat> and the money he acquired by envying other living entities is the passage money with which he leaves this world. Text 32. Thus, by arrangement of Supreme Personality of Godhead, the maintainer of the king's man in put, is put into a hellish condition to suffer for his sinful activities like a man who has lost his will. Text 33. Therefore, a person who is very eager to maintain his family and king's men simply by black met methods certainly grows to the darkest region of hell, which is known as Andhra Tamisha. Text 34. Having gone through all the miserable hellish conditions and having passed into regular order through the lowest forms of animal life, life prior to human birth and having thus been purged of his sins, one is reborn again as a human being on this earth. All right, so we're hearing about the, the cycle which the, the sinful living entity has to go through 
right? He, he dies, first of all, a very miserable death. We heard about his death and the pain and the suffering he was going through. So finally he leaves the body and the Yamaduras take him and they take him to Yamaloka. And then he's sentenced according to his different activities, what he'd been doing, sinful acts, he has to suffer. And he's put into these different hellish conditions. And then after suffering in different hells, then he's given different bodies. Not immediately human bodies, but he, he, he comes into the first the lower forms of animal species. So lower forms, you know, like dogs and animals like that. And, and then gradually they come to the human birth. And then when they come to the human birth, then that's an, again they have the opportunity for this awakening, for changing, for understanding the, the purpose of life. When you come to the human form of life, it's so rare that people actually understand the value of the human life. So we have to under, we have to appreciate how fortunate we are in the human body and make proper use of this human life and use it to do something worthwhile. Otherwise, we, we've, we're, we've wasted that opportunity. So living in these different species of life, and suffering, and someone's a rich man, rich people are also suffering. The rich people, the poor people, they're all suffering in the material world if they have no Krishna consciousness. The important thing is people need to get some Krishna consciousness, understand how to make proper use of the human life. From Prabhupada's purport, text 34, the last verse of this chapter, it can be concluded that if someone is not willing to enter into hellish life, as in Tamishra or under Tamishra, then he must take to the process of Krishna consciousness, which is the first class yoga system. Because even if one is unable to attain complete Krishna consciousness in this life, he is guaranteed at least to take his next birth in a human family. He cannot be sent into a hellish condition. Krishna consciousness is the purest life and it protects all human beings from gliding down to hell to take birth in a family of dogs and hogs. So we, we can note with interest these different names which are given to the hellish, the hellish conditions like Tamishra, and under Tamishra. Do you remember hearing these names before? Tamishra, under Tamishra, Maha Moha, Moha. Yes, yes, yes Maharaj. Chapter 20 it is explained, Maharaj. Five yeah. ignorance. Yes, five different coverings of ignorance, right? Five different coverings of ignorance. Hmm. So Tamishra, and the thinking that is the, the covering to understand that I'm the, I'm, that the, the body, the, after what the body dies, then there's nothing. Or maybe that's under Tamishra. Anyway, one is, one is like that. One is that, to think that death is the finish of everything. With death, everything is finished. But when you're in Yamaloka, <laughs> you see, it's not finished. Everything is not finished. There's so much more. There's so much more suffering going on there. So the amazing thing is that although people may go through this suffering, they're put into these different hellish conditions, in Yamaloka, different hells, Kumbhipaka Loka, 
and so many different things to suffer and then put into different animal species, still we come back to the human body and we, and we don't take care to make proper use of the human life. Just like people go into pr prison and they suffer in the jail and, and, and sometimes, and then of course they go back to jail after some time, they're back in the jail again, they go in the jail again and again, come in, go in. they never learn to give up their sinful and illegal activities. So the same way we've been taking birth, we've been here in the material world, we've taken many births. We don't know how many times we've had the human body, we can't understand, we can't remember anything about our previous life, but we know there was previous lives there, we had many births. So the, the understanding is we can get out by taking advantage of Krishna consciousness. This is how we escape. So we have to take advantage. Okay, here's from chapter 29, text 43, Prabhupada's purport, the last purport of the text. Someone like to read? Ramanujya Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. No one can live within this material world eternally. The phenomenal world is created, maintained and destroyed by the finger signal of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, a devotee does not desire anything in this material world. A devotee desires only to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This servitude exists eternally. The Lord exists eternally. His servitor exists eternally and the service exists eternally. Srimad Bhavatam, 32, 39, would you like to comment about this? A devotee desires only to serve. Shouldn't a devotee desire to have uh, facilities like wealth and position and power and he could use it for the service of devotees? You know, someone may say, well, if I had more money, I could do charity, I could, I could dis distribute free books or I could give, uh, help build the temple. So is that, is that a desire? Is that wrong to desire like that? Yes, someone? It is good, Maharaj. It is not, nothing wrong in uh, having those desires. As well, long as it is connected with uh, serving the Lord, it is okay. Well, why did it happen that when Prahlad Maharaj was asked if he had any desire, he said, didn't want anything, he said, I'm not a businessman. And Kolaveka Sridhar was asked by Lord Chaitanya, and Kolaveka Sridhar was really poor, but he said, no, I don't want anything, I'm happy, I just want to go on as I'm doing. Because they were a pure devotees, Maharaj. Oh, so shouldn't we become pure devotees? Yes, our aim is to become that. Yes, Maharaj. And so, so we can, we, we should desire or we shouldn't desire? Should desire to become pure devotee. No, but should we, de should, if we have the opportunity, if we're asked, should we, should we ask the Lord? If we're given the opportunity? I think by giving these two examples, we should not ask Maharaj. <laughs> yeah, anybody like... But we are not so pure as long as we are... Uh, not reach that stage, still we can ask, Lord is merciful, He will give. He will purify over a period. Can I share, Maharaj? Yes, please. Uh, Dhanavad Pranams. Uh, Maharaj, it, it depends on the genuineness of the desire. Uh, one, may, one may say, I want for the service of Krishna, but, but within the heart, maybe He wants for Himself or for the family. So, so, so it, it depends on the genuineness. If, if someone genuinely wants to uh, employ the wealth or whatever he desires completely for the service of Krishna, yes, the, that is not a material desire. Okay. So what about Sudama, you know, Sudama Brahman going to Dwarka and his dealing with Krishna there? He, he did not ask anything, but still, uh, 
Krishna provided without without asking. So and so how did he accept it? Krishna's mercy. Yes. Anybody? Uh, Sudama accepted it as uh, Krishna's blessings and and he used it for, for Krishna's service. Yes, I think, yeah. He accepted it in the mood of renunciation, right? Not for his sense gratification, but for Krishna's service. Yes. Yeah, Maharaj, can I ask you something? Yes. Uh, Maharaj, in last session, and there was a point where it was discussed that uh, uh, Krishna by mercifully facilitated to the jivas who wants to forget him. I mean, Krishna facilitated him to forget himself who wants to forget uh, Lord. So many times I think that, or oh, many times having material desires, I just ignored Krishna, so I should not, I mean, punished by having those facilities which makes me forget Krishna. I mean, I don't want that mercy of Krishna, which which makes me to forget. So every time, I mean, uh, uh, we feel that whatever desires we put, across, put uh, in front of Lord, one bottom line should be there that Krishna, even if I wish to forget, if I uh, unknowingly, it, uh, 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 tries to forget you, please don't, I mean, you please remain in my remembrance. Don't uh, leave me because of my uh, 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 illicit desires making me away. So please don't allow those desires to get f uh, fructified and uh, I mean, to reward me, uh, fulfill my desires. So having desires, getting it fulfilled, and then having those material facilities, still I'm not sure whether I'll be using that for Krishna or for my purpose. Under in the name of Krishna, probably if I ask, desire, I mean uh, some wealth, but again I don't have that confidence. So at least I can ask to Krishna that please, you always remain in my remembrance. Whatever you grant me, that should not be the obstacle to forget you. I mean, uh, so. Yes, Having you, yeah. material desire, it's a kind of a, a danger. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, Prabhu. It's a very good point. Yes, that definitely is true that, uh, that if we get material facilities, we could say it's the grace of Krishna, but we have to be very careful that we don't forget Krishna. Just like, you know, somebody may say, oh, I'm buying a new car for the service of Krishna. <laughs> you know, the devotees even, devotees go on Sankirtan. And not so much nowadays, but in the, in the, in, in the past, you know, in, uh, maybe in the 80s also, in the 90s, devotees would go out for Sankirtan and we would need a vehicle to go out in. And so sometimes devotee would want to get an expensive car want to get a, a, very, a very expensive car. And I had the experience, I was approaching one man asking him to become a life member and he told me, he said, you know, I've seen you devotees, he said, you people, you, you all have expensive cars. <laughs> he said, you have better cars than I have. <laughs> Uh, so he, he, he didn't like to become a life member. He said, you people live better, more opulently than me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we have to be a little uh, <laughs> careful that when we get things, material things, objects, that it's not for our sense gratification, but it's for the service of Krishna. But it's a fine line, it's a very fine line that what is for our sense gratification and what is for Krishna's service. So that's the, the problem which we face. You know, having a car, it, it, it can be for Krishna's service, but it could also be for, it can become for your own sense gratification. And similarly people, there was a case, one devote, one lady was telling me she was approached by a devotee and he was asking her to buy him a mobile phone. And 
he was telling her that if I have a mobile phone, I can use it to cultivate the congregation better. But the same devotee, when he got the mobile phone, he was using it to also watch movies and to also, you know, mundane things like cricket matches and th stuff like that. And so, it's a fine line, what's for the service of Krishna and what's for our own sense gratification. We have to be very cautious about these things. Particularly as devotees living in temple, the full-time devotees, then there's certain standards that are required. And devotees who are living in the temple, they should be honest and straightforward and uh, dedicate themselves fully for the service of Krishna. They shouldn't be uh, listen, having a mobile phone to listen to Bollywood movies and listen to cricket matches and so on. Okay? Everyone agree? Any comments on this? Maharaj Hare Krishna, can I ask uh, questions? Yes, please do. Then with pronouns, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, couple of questions. So, reading this chapter and, and studying, you know, for Purva Swadhyay, I, I reflected on two things. One is uh, the, the bad activities that I have done myself. And I see how a family man, you know, he makes so much efforts uh, to, to sustain his family. So my father is no more. And I have seen he did make efforts uh, for bringing us up. So uh, first is what should I do for myself? And, and what would I do for him who is no more? Well, you're asking me what can you do for yourself? What can you do for him? The same thing. What you do for yourself will also benefit him. That if you become Krishna conscious and you become dedicated fully to the service of Krishna, it will certainly be a great benefit to your father, although he's no more of this world. But because of his connection and because he's produced by you, just like Prahlad Maharaj was worried about his own father, Rani Kashipu, until the Lord told him that because you're a great devotee, so not only your father, but for 14 generations, all your forefathers will all be delivered. Right? So, if you're also a devotee and you dedicate yourself to Krishna consciousness, you give the greatest benefit to your father. Okay, Maharaj. But, but that, was, that was the standard of Prahlad Maharaj. I, I, I don't know, you know, how, yeah. how, far, how far I could go. Yeah, of course. We know Prahlad's a very, very special, very great soul, but we should understand that whatever we offer for the service of the Lord, it will definitely there will be benefit there for our forefathers. I mean, your father, you may say you were not like Prahlad, but your father was not like Hirani Kashipu also. That's right, Maharaj. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, any other questions? Maharaj, may I just ask a question? Yeah. Um, uh, Maharaj, um, as you mentioned that when we are staying in temple, we should be very careful because uh, we do get material facilities. And uh, to be very honest, even though we are staying as, as um, full-time brahmacharis in temple, we do get carried away by the material facilities. Um, we may not necessarily um, uh, try to enjoy things on a gross level, like try to get facilities for ourselves, but still the tendency to enjoy uh, scripts in very subtly and it, it tends to um, completely discourage us or dishearten us from the path of devotional service or trying to search for Rupa and the spiritual master. In this, in this situation where us, how can we protect ourselves so that we don't uh, we don't fall victim again and again to such a uh, to such tendencies, minus? Well, definitely, def we want to try to minimize our demands. This is the principle of Ishyavashya. 
accepting only what is necessary for yourself and not accepting more than is absolutely necessary. Uh, the, of course, the, the, the problem comes in what is actually necessary for ourself. <laughs> you know, what do we actually need? And, and, and people are thinking, no, I need this, I need... <laughs> so, it's really, a, 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 I, I, as I said, it's a difficult thing. It's a fine line between what is for Krishna and what is for the service of our senses. So, we can be guided by senior Vaishnavas and by the association of other devotees, you know, people who you feel are good examples, then they can best guide you and instruct you what is appropriate. We, sh we should always take the shelter, be willing to hear from our peers, other devotees around us, what do they think, what is their opinion. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important that we do have association, because it's so easy to go off when, if we're on our own, it's very easy to become uh, disconnected from what, is actu what should be the actual standard. So there, there should be some standard. No, just like uh, a couple, a householder couple having a home, living in a home. I remember Tamal Krishna Maharaj when there was one couple, uh, they, got, they had a house they, and, they took, and they brought Tamal Krishna Maharaj to see their house. And he was very pleased when he saw their home. He thought, yes, it's, he said it's very nice. He said it's adequate. He said it's not luxurious and it's not frugal. It's sort of like middle class. And he thought, this is very appropriate for devotees. And he said, you know, you're, young, you're a young couple and you have money, you're not poor, you don't need to live in a poverty-stricken home, you're not, you're not so poor. But at the same time, you don't want to be too opulent, you want to control yourself. So don't live too luxuriously, keep it as simple as possible and at the same time natural. It should be acceptable by the normal people, by the people around you. If you live too frugally, too austerely, you know, if you live in a tin shed, then, then you know, for some people, you know, okay, that, that's, that's their standard, but it's not for everyone. And we don't have to do that artificially. At the same time, you don't have to live in a condominium, you don't have to live in the greatest luxury, unless you're really, really, you know, you're really up there. If you're really a big person, you're really a you're top executive, then it is probably required. Just like if you're a businessman, you know, it's required that you have to dress properly, you have to have a number of suits and so on. It's not that you could be a, a businessman and meet your clients and so on and dress in your old jeans and shirts and things and you, you know you have to you have to look the part because you're dealing with people you, as Prabhupada said we have to dress uh, thinking of others we eat for our own self but when it comes to dressing we have to be conscious of others. And similarly also, you know, living conditions also, it's important that uh, you should live in the proper, proper manner. You shouldn't try to be too austere and at the same time, unless you're really a, a big exec, a top man, then you don't want to be living in the most opulent situation. Be satisfied with what's provided by the grace of Krishna. That's the principle. I don't Thank know. You so much. Is that any Thank help? You so much. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So then we'll finish here tonight. Thank you very much. And we'll be back on Thursday and we'll go on to chapter 31. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki.
Yeah. Go back to Vrindaki. Yeah. Hare Krishna.